Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Volkswagen, and I'm checking out a 2024 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport in the SE trim level. Now the Cross Sport is basically the Atlas without the third row for the most part. Uh, there's, there is a lot of overlapping features, but they are fantastic uh, in the 2024 model has a 20 inch wheels with a gloss black finish and they look they don't look overly huge on a vehicle like this even though they're 20 inch wheels they changed the front quite a bit for the 2024 model uh one of the main things that stands out especially in low light is that the badge illuminates here uh, so this illuminates softly at nighttime same thing with the back is a red in the back white here in the front and then there's a an led strip that goes all the way from but one side to the other which is more pronounced at nighttime and you see the amber turn signals there. Uh, it does have the adaptive projector and reflector headlight system with cornering lights and an all weather light instead of a fog light. There is parking sensors across the front here, here integrated into that uh, black portion. And then there's like a the silver body colored portion there at the bottom. This is the silver color, which looks pretty good, especially in contrast to all the black the vehicle has. Looking at the profile here, uh, you can see that uh, the kind of the shape of the vehicle here kind of swoops down a little bit there in the back and it has the black cladding here all around each wheel well as well as the bottom of the doors uh, as well as the pillar here. Body colored handles, upper portion of the side mirror is also body colored and you have a little chrome crossboard badge here on the side and looking nice. Doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle keeping that threshold clean, cleaner than what it otherwise would be. You can see the all black interior and then it has like this kind of brushed aluminum look accent here looking nice it has enclosed pocket uh here and down there uh soft touch, touch surfaces are here here and here hard touch at the bottom limited aluminum sill plate manually adjusted seats but you do have a height adjustment as well uh and check it out it has like this uh carbon fiber look here to the outer portion of the seats and this is a simulated leather heated and cooled seats have the diamond quilting there going on nice plenty of leg room this is an atlas so you have lots of room uh, you even have a little little cubby right here that you can share with the driver and the passenger lockable glove compartment smooth plastic on the inside really good size and then you have the perforations like you saw on the door uh, and then you have more of that kind of brushed look right there, right above the gloss black. The dash is a non-reflective kind of rubbery soft surface. You see the openings for the front door, nice and wide. Swing of the door is nice. Same thing here at the back, plenty of room to get in and out of the vehicle. Uh, the back door, very similar styling as the front, it even has the, uh, the accent and everything, but it also has uh, the shade that's retractable. You have additional pockets here as well. Here's the threshold area. You can see the seats have that carbon fiber back here as well. It does have places for car seats on the outer side of the seats. Armrest cup holders here in the center. You can move those out of the way. It's basically a bench seat. So you can see the, the, uh, the car seat attachments on that side and this side there's map pockets on the back of both front seats almost a completely flat floor lots of leg room check it out and there's a little cubby usb charge ports as well as a power inverter down at the bottom has a locking fuel door here on the driver's side traditional cap tether and a little place to hang uh, the cap while you're pumping gas that little post it does use regular fuel Take a look at the back of the vehicle. The roof rails are a silver color. The antenna here is a gloss black, little shark fin antenna. The third brake light is at the top of the glass integrated into that spoiler. And then you have the gloss black around it as well, kind of blending it in with the rear glass. It does have a rear wiper as well. And full LED taillights, very impressive looking, especially the badge that illuminates at nighttime or low light, which is a red color back here. The front is a white. Now, if you can tell, uh, that that red glow I can kind of barely see it but it looks cool I was pulling it out of the showroom uh, and, and it wasn't so bright and you can see it it's just very impressive 
So the backup camera is located right here. A little bit offset, kind of next to the tag. Not ideal in my opinion, but there it is. Uh, it does have the parking sensors across the back as well. There's a reflector here as well. Uh, and also you have the, to the uh, towing package, which has, which has the seven-way outlet. These kind of look similar to exhaust ports, but they're not. They're just kind of for looks. The actual exhaust is underneath the vehicle. Raising up the power, the power lift gate. Just press that button. Hard plastic there on the inside. And check it out, lots of room. Uh, so the, this one doesn't have the third row. So basically you have a huge compartment, storage compartment or cargo area. You have lights on both sides. There's also a little hanger here, a little cubby there. And this is where the biggest change would happen as far as the uh, the difference between the Atlas and the Atlas crossboard. 12 volt power supply, another light, another hanger on this side. There's also a place where you can put a shade, uh, optional shade you can put here and kind of slide it back cover up your cargo area uh, this also lifts up here and this is where you'll find the spare tire and tools and additional space around it and this floor is just kind of laying there it's not secured by anything so you can fold these seats down it's a 60 40 split and you can fold down and add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space depending on your needs you can lower the power lift gate pushing that button right there Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see the accelerator, brake pedal, footrest, plenty of room up here. Let's take a look under the hood. Raising the hood, there's a latch right here in the very center, right above the illuminated emblem. Lift it up, holds itself up. It does have insulation and seals across the compartment here, engine compartment. Insulated firewall as well as heat shielded back there because it is a four cylinder turbocharged engine and the turbocharger is there in the back. So intake of the front, exhaust in the back, four cylinder, and it's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. It does have the blind spot detection system and it has a little indicator there on the side mirrors. Uh, the driver's side doors, just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, power windows all are one touch up and down. And the rear windows go down all the way as well. And there's the ability to open up the power lift gate. Power seat for the driver, as well as two way lumbar adjustments. These are heated and ventilated seats. To the left of the steering column, uh, you do have a few buttons here, and these are soft touch buttons. So for the headlights, you just press this button and cycle through what you want. There's parking lights, there's off, there's automatic, and then there's headlights on, you force them on. Uh, you also have the front replacement for our fog lights, which are the all weather lights. Uh, and those also serve as the uh, cornering lights as well. And the front rear defrosters are located on this side for some reason next to the headlight switch. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column you lock in place here. Now the key is basically the same. Uh, there's a lot of overlap with a lot of Volkswagens with this key. Uh, it has the remote start, lock, unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate, and a panic button here. Physical key is also on the inside. Here's some stats. I'll have more information in the description, but the, uh, the front-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive systems are listed here with the, the horsepower, torque, and the curb weight. Alright, so I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall. I had the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down. I'll show you the potential legroom here. And yeah, plenty of room. It's definitely too far back for me to drive, so if you're a little bit over six feet tall, no problem driving this vehicle. Steering wheel is nice and comfortable. It has a simulated leather, uh, and then it has the stitching there on the inside. And it's a little firm, but it's still comfortable because of that thickness helps out a lot. So this bottom portion, the silver part, that's for your radio. Uh, so there is the volume for the radio to change to the tracks, uh, or depending on what you're playing, the radio station or whatever. On the left side is the cruise control. Once you turn it on, you can set, resume, and cancel. And then you have the, the ability to adjust the speed and the adjust the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you because it does have the adaptive cruise control system. Here on the right side, you do have the voice recognition there, um, but the rest of the buttons, and also the heated steering wheel as well, the rest of the buttons correspond with this nice screen. We'll get to that in just a second. Windshield wiper controls are here. Turn signals there. Uh, it also has your headlight dimmer switch. 
and there's a button here on the end right here to quickly access safety features uh, like your lane assist system and the adaptive cruise control. So looking at the screen right here, uh, you can see right now we have one, there's different views, but right now we have kind of like a simulated uh, dial, sort of like a, a traditional gauge cluster. So the RPM is there on the left with the what gear you're in. On the right, digital speedometer with a analog style speedometer. Uh, odometer's here. I really like the fact that you can have a, a calendar or have the day's date uh, the day and date and time right there in front of your face. That's sometimes very important. And then you have the, uh, the time up here if you don't have it here. Outside temperature, that kind of stuff. Uh, the status of how many miles you have to drive, your, your range as far as fuel, so your fuel gauge is there. So uh, hitting these buttons here, so you have the view, left, right, up, down, and okay. So we're gonna push view a couple of times here so you can see the different view options. Uh, there's that view. There's that view, and then it goes back to this original one here. Now, if we go to the right and left, if we go to the right, it just pops up a menu on the right side to choose what you want on this side. So let's say we want a compass on this side, we can choose that, uh, or let's go ahead and go to, um, let's go ahead and go to audio, so you can see whatever the audio is doing. So yeah, you get the idea, it just changes whatever you want here. I like having a speed. Uh, hitting the left side will pop up the same thing. You can adjust what you want here. All right, but if we go up and down without choosing a side, it'll be the center part. So we can choose the information we want in the center, including nothing if we want. I like to have the digital speedometer or the date, depending on what I'm doing. If I Sometimes I need the time. You know, time is of the essence, so I have to have that. So I have, the, I like the way you can quickly go to that if you want. And this screen right here is really nice too. Um, so this this home screen is kind of like split. So you have this screen, this screen, sort of like your phone. You have like kind of widgets in a way. Uh, so this, if you hit the home button, it's going to take you here. But uh, this is kind of like your starting point as well. Uh, so you can access your phone, and you, once you pair your phone, you have access to calls, receive, send, that kind of thing, your phone book, and use the voice recognition as well. Uh, this is where you have your radio and media. Now it has the AM, FM, satellite radio, as well as the internet radio, but also if you connect a device like Bluetooth or uh, to connect to a USB port, it'll pop up additional options there as well. Uh, the navigation, this one doesn't have navigation activated. I think you can update it using software at the dealership. Not sure about that, but it does not have it on this vehicle. Vehicle information here. So this will show you the vehicle status. Of course, it's not popping up right now for some reason. But you can pull down from the top and you can have turn off your stop start feature. Uh, mute your audio. Uh, you'd have to do a little bit of different options here just by pulling from down from the top. You also have a uh, dark mode as well, which I prefer. Yeah, I'm not sure why this isn't popping up. It should show a little, just status of the vehicle, is like a little image data. All right, so we do have some information here. All right, the next one will be Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, App Connect. Uh, you can adjust the sound here. You do have, you know, like help, different help menus, and then the settings here. So yeah, I think you get the idea. It's fairly straightforward. The climate control, there's two ways to do it. You can just hit down this here, and this pops up. You have smart climate possible, classic climate, or air care here at the top. I like the classic climate, that's what I'm accustomed to. Uh, we can adjust where we want the fan to blow, um, recirculate the air, uh, turn on air conditioning off, that kind of stuff. We could also have auto mode as well. And there's your fan speed. You do have the heated and ventilated seat controls here as well. It's a three stage, so high, medium, and low for the heated and cooled part for the driver and passenger. Uh, and of course you can sync the driver and passenger if you want. You do have the ability to go to the climate here. There's a little shortcut button down here, pops up here. Uh, you have the assist systems that can pop up here as well. 
uh, the parking menu, which has the auto park feature, which you can hit that, and then it initiates that process. Uh, you also have the mode, which is your drive mode. So you have Eco, Comfort, and Sport, and then you have Custom. There's the four-way flashers. Um, this opens up like this, and there is a wireless charge port as well as two USB ports here as well. Cup holders, and then the this is the shifter. This is the ability to start the vehicle, start and stop the vehicle. That's how you start it up. Um, now the shifter basically is you just hold the brake and you can push it forward to go in reverse. Two things will happen. The backup camera will pop up, but also your parking sensors will be active as well. Now if you gently pull it back, it goes into neutral. Pull it back all the way, it goes into drive. Now if you pull it back again, it's going to go into a standard mode in which you can use the paddle shifters to change to the gears. Now that's a little bit different from the drive mode. Uh, you have sport, which is a little bit different than the standard mode. It's totally different. The sport is a different, um, it's a drive mode. And then the standard mode is to change to the gears. If you need like engine braking, that kind of thing, um, that's what this S here stands for, is standard mode. And you put, push that to go back and park. There's a little storage cubby right in here, which is nice. Quick access. You can put your phone or whatever there as well. Armrest is here. It's kind of rubbery soft, but it is nice and soft and large as well. It has a stitching there on the outside. Kind of a French design, double stitched. Uh, this lifts up. doesn't flop back down on you. And it has a large compartment here with a really thick uh, felt liner at the bottom. Nice and thick. And there it is. It does have USB ports there as well and a place for the wires to go in and out of the compartment right there. So when you close it down, it allows for some wires to go there. Auto dim rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming right now because we have the shade of the light sensor, which is here on the left side. Right above that, uh, you can turn on the interior lights. Uh, you can turn on the actual lights here, uh, look of individual lights, one side of the other. And then you can turn off, have the lights turn on with the door, or you can turn that feature off here. You also have roadside assistance buttons as well. Now the visor is like a vinyl material that matches the cloth that's the headliner, uh, that matches the color. And then you have a little clip, light, mirror, it also extends out. The visibility in the back is, is pretty good. Uh, lots of lights there. But the, that final pillar in the far back is a little bit wide. But other than that, it's not really a big deal. Uh, you do have the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, uh, and the parking sensors, backup camera, all that stuff to help you drive the vehicle safely anyway. But, uh, but anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you to East Coast Volkswagen here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'll see you guys next time.